What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is Candy and the Gang, Season 1, Episode 5. So, we start this episode off where we left off last week with them talking to Sh um, Chandrika and <clears throat> confronting her about what Dom overheard her saying. Now, what I find to be very interesting is that she is really concerned about who snitched on her when, girl, you snitched on yourself. Like, you said it. They have your voice on the phone talking to Brandon. You said it. So that, again, I said last week in my review, what that tells me is that you have made comments like this so many times that you don't know who done snitched on you because you done told a lot of people. See, if I only have one person that I vent to and I talk my, my, my trash to, then I already know if it get out. I already know who told it. But the fact that you don't know what direction it came from, um, tells me that you done told a lot of people. And what I find to be so funny and ironic about the whole thing is that it's you. You snitched on yourself. Anyway, moving on. So, then we see Brandon and Dom. Dom shows up, um, to Brandon's apartment and they basically just rehashing what had happened down, um, um, his birthday party, he, her meeting his family and everything. And she said, you know, they talk about what happened at the, um, the, the meeting, the staff meeting. And he was like, well, you know, do you think it was worth it that you missed the staff meeting? And she was like, yeah. She said, I had an audition and I booked the job and I'm going to London. And he was like, what? She was like, yeah. But he was like, what? And then they talked to Candy and Candy was like, what? So listen, congratulations, Dom. I'm going to hold on to that because next week it looks like they're going to address this whole Dom and Brandon thing. So I'm going to just let it stay there. Later on in the episode, they decide that they're going to be official. That when she go to London, she not going to see nobody else. He not going to see nobody else. So they are in an officially official committed relationship. Again, recipe for disaster, all kinds of HR problems. But let's, I digress. So then we see Brian. Now we finally found out how long Brian was suspended for. At least I did, because I never heard them give an exact time. So Brandon was suspended for two weeks. And Brandon said in those two weeks, he has been doing all kinds of stuff with his, um, with his, um, egg roll situation. This time we see him making a cheesecake egg roll. And it looks like he's got like a little strawberry dipping sauce that he's using. And Chandrika comes up to talk to him about what had happened down to the store. Um, when she got confronted about what she had said, um, and Brian, you know, is that like a prerequisite to go to Brian house? Like if you go with Brian house, he going to make you make an egg roll. Cause last week it was Rashad. This week it was Chandrika. Is that what got to happen, Brandon? When we come visit you, we can't just bring you like a plant or bring you a bottle of wine or something. We got to make an egg roll. That's what the, the rule is. Anyway, I know next time I go to Atlanta, I want to, I'm going to have to follow, um, well, I follow you on Instagram anyway, Brandon. I mean, Brian, but I know the next time I come to Atlanta, I need to find out where you're going to be popping up in because I want one of these egg rolls. They look good, okay? They do look good. Anyway, what you need to do, real talk, Brandon, what you need to do is you need to talk candy into adding those egg rolls, um, the dessert egg rolls to the menu, at least at one of the locations. Right now, while while every while this is all going on with the show, you've become a fan favorite. Everybody loves you, Brandon. If and Candy, you know you always ready for a business opportunity. Brandon, you need to sit down with Candy and you need to say, I'll supply XYZ amount of egg rolls per week to add to the dessert menu. We'll do it as a special. We could change it up every month. One month is gonna be the cheesecake egg roll. The next month is gonna be the banana pudding egg roll. I don't know, I'm just making up names. But that's what you really need to do. Uh, Brandon, and then y'all come up with an amount of money that you gonna pay per, I'm, I'm giving y'all too much you got it, I gave you listen, I done gave you chapter one, go on finish the book and go talk to Candy, okay if y'all haven't already done it, cause to me that's a no brainer um, moving on so, Brand, Brian I keep saying Brandon, y'all know I mean Brian, right Brian talks to Chandrika about, um what happened down to the meeting and she tells him about the team building, which they're going to have. Um, and Brian is like, oh, well, I'm coming to the team building. Like, I don't even know if I can come, you know, because I'm suspended and everything. But I'm coming. Okay. Okay. So, Candy, Don Juan, and um, Todd have a conversation with Philip about the team building and about Brian. 
Now, Phillip's thing is Brian need to be fired. Like, Brian is just respectful, he's insubordinate, and he need to be fired. And Candy says, you know, she feels like Phillip is too quick to throw people away. Like, she doesn't, you know, he don't want to rehab nobody, he don't want to work with nobody, he's just ready to throw them away. Brand, Bri damn, Phillip's thing is, that's what you brought me here for. You brought me here to fix it. This is how I know how to fix it. Um, so the compromise that they come up with is, they're going to invite everybody to the team building, and if after the team building, Brandon still feels like Brian is not a, the right fit or Brian is not ready to do what they need him to do, then they'll let him go, right? So they're putting it um, at Brandon's feet, which is, the, is, which is where it needs to be because number one, it started with Brandon, and number two, if Brandon is going to be the manager of that location, Brandon has to find his voice. He has to, uh, which is what Don Juan said. So then we see Chandrika decide, she decided that Patrick was the one that had told Candy what had happened. And so she called herself going to confront Patrick and Melvin about it. Now, what I find funny is, again, Patrick did snitch on you. Let's be clear. Patrick did snitch on you. But Patrick didn't snitch on you this time. So in this situation, Patrick is innocent. But what I find interesting is Patrick talking about something. I ain't no snitch and y'all know production. What did production do? showed us um um video a video clip of when um patrick was snitching but neither here nor there melvin was i mean melvin was the one that shut it down melvin was like so basically you don't have no proof of nothing this is just what you think you coming over here confronting us on some bullshit he was like ain't nobody said nothing girl go on about your business when he didn't say girl i added that go on about your business but shandrika you really don't have any proof of nothing girl anyway so we see miss riley is her birthday riley is in town she's a sophomore in college now and she's in town and they had a little birthday cake for her and afterwards they get to talking about what needs to happen down to the restaurant because todd is talking about well who's going to take over the restaurant you know um when i'm gone kind of thing now the conversation turns to the fact that everybody needs to take a rotation in the kitchen. Because Mama Joyce says, listen, you're never in the kitchen. You're quick to be mad at people. You're quick to judge what people have going on. But you're not quick to want to know all the different stations. She said, and I feel like if you worked in that kitchen and you understood how hard it was in the kitchen and how many, you know, different things go on in that kitchen, then I think you'll be a little more um, understanding about what people are dealing with in the kitchen. And baby, y'all know they had to go to the OLG confessional Bertha as always, it's over it. Uh, she's sitting there like, why am I here? And Mama Joy's talking about, see, that's why I don't know nobody like Todd now. She said, that's why all of Atlanta don't like Todd. I said, damn, all of Atlanta, Mama Joyce, don't nobody like Todd? All of Atlanta, though? Child, all of Atlanta. <laughs> anyway, I said, damn, Mama Joyce, you still don't like Todd? Damn. I mean, you would think that over time, like, they still together, they making money, they got their family. No. Mm -mm. She still don't like him. Anyway, we get to the team building, so we have Team Candy and Team Todd. They're going against each other. Don Juan and Phillip put everything together, and they have the different people in the groups. Now, they're going to let um, them pick their groups. You know, Candy and Todd are going to pick their players. And Candy does a good thing. Candy said, now, normally, I would be picking everybody that I think could win because y'all know how com how competitive Candy is. She said, but in this one, what I need, I need the people that need to work together to be on the same team. So she ends up picking Torin, Phillip, Brian, and Chandrika. Because she said, those are the people that need to be on the same team because they need to work together. Now, it did start off a little spotty with Torin, I mean, with Brian and um, Philip, because Brian wouldn't even take the, the, because the, they all had to wear, like, have uh, their color, um, uh, handkerchief, do-rags, whatever. I can't get the word out now. But he wouldn't even take it from um, Philip. I said, now, come on, Brian. Your job is on the line, bro, because he already said that he need his buddy at OLG, okay? So, Brian, I'm going to need you to get it together. But they do tug of war. Todd's team wins the first one. And they do this cute little commentating thing that they're doing. Now, the OLG, they are the referees, honey. With their Bertha come through there with her whistle, okay? 
So the first the first game is um tug of war. Todd teams went teams went team wins. The second one is this earthworm situation where they got to scoot across the floor with their hands behind their back, and baby mama Joyce gets down there to demonstrate. Listen. Okay, don't let your mama do that again. Don't let your mama do that again, Candy. I mean, I'm impressed that Mama Joyce could get down there and do it, but we don't need to see her do it. We don't we don't need that in our life. Then the third game, so Candy's team won that game. So then the third game was the game where everybody has to be blindfolded and they have to um put a plate together by listening to directions from the other players to help them, you know, like a relay thing. And of course that's team building, that's trust. Um, and they did a really good job of it to the point where there was a tie. Now, do I really think it was a tie? No, I think they made it a tie so they wouldn't be like a winner and a loser. Even though Candy did tell everybody that the winner would get a $700, which basically would be a hundred dollars per member. Cause they had, um, well y'all can do the math shit. Baby, they were sitting at that table and, um, one of the aunties told Bertha to shut up. Baby, what you do that for? Bertha said, don't you tell me to shut up. I said, why y'all keep playing with Bertha like that? Why do y'all keep playing with Aunt Bertha like that? Then, Mama Joyce wants Todd, if he loses, to work in that damn kitchen. And Todd is like, all right, Mama Joyce. But of course, because they ended up being a tie, Candy said Todd didn't have to go in the kitchen because it was a tie. There was no real winner. The good news is at the end of the competition, Philip and Brian really did get along. Um, Philip said that he was really impressed by Torn. He he saw something in Torn. Torn was really out there. He was a team player. He was really so overall the the team building I think worked. Um Brian then went in there and told everybody that him and Sean um him and um Dom sleeping together. I mean, not Brian, Brandon, talking something about, yeah, well, you know, you, when I, you saw I woke up this morning, when, when, when I woke up this morning at five o'clock or something, boy, and I feel like Brandon did that on purpose, I feel like Brandon wanted everybody to know that they was together, because I think Brandon not smart enough to understand that that's a problem with them sleeping together, like, I, because, sir, there was no reason, it was just, it was, it wasn't even like a slip of like, um, did you did you see my contacts this morning? It was like straight up unnecessary. He was asking her about what time her gym opened and whether she got a nice gym at her at her apartment complex. There was no reason for you to have that conversation at work in the middle of the relay. Child bye. So when it was over with, Brandon went and had a conversation with um, Brian. Philip came in to sort of oversee the conversation, and Brandon told Brian, "Listen." When you worked here before, we didn't have any problems. You know, we didn't have any problems out of you. But you seem like you've come back, and you've come back with a little bit of an attitude. You know, um, and Brian was very humble. At first, Brian was playing games, because Brian's talking about, well, you know, when I left, you know, there's some new rules that I didn't know nothing about. But, girl, Rashid clearly told you that y'all couldn't sit at that bar. And you said, well, Brandon doing it, why can't I do it? But, all right, Brian, I'm going to let you have that one. Because you did apologize to Philip. You said, look... I walked in the door, I had already heard some things about you, so I had some preconceived notions, and you could have told me, good morning, and I probably would have had an attitude, and for that, I apologize, I was wrong. And Philip said, you know what, I appreciate that, and you know, maybe my delivery could be better, and I apologize if, you know, I come off a certain way. And so I could appreciate the fact that both of them found a, a place where they could, a middle ground where they could meet up, and Brandon told Brian, listen... I'm not going to fire you. I'm going I'm to let you come back. But just know you got a strike. You two, you know, three strikes, you're out, and I'm going to have to terminate you. And Brian was like, that's fair. Like, I thank you, and that's fair. So I appreciate how they resolved that situation. Um, I just feel like that was a good a good way to, to resolve it. And so this is where we are now. Chandrika then told the, the OLG people that she want to work there. Um, cause Candy asked her point blank, do you want to work here? She said she did, but she's still mad about who snitched on her. So I don't think we're done with that one. Anyway, that's the episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.